So good morning, everybody. Um, and as you know, my name is Louise McLeod, and I am the brand spanking new convener of the Big Black Strategy Planning Committee. Um, but I'm also an issues expert on human rights. And uh, putting on my other hat, I also sit on Julie's Public Affairs Committee at NOVA. So she keeps me up to date on everything that's going on at NOVA, which is great. However, my organizational ex uh, expertise, particularly in advocacy, is based more on international advocacy than it is on local advocacy. I currently serve as the Vice President of uh, Advocacy and Education for Graduate Women International, which is an NGO based in Geneva, Switzerland, and our focus is mainly education for women and girls. And we have affiliates in 54 countries working on the issue of education for women and girls. We, our American affiliate is called uh, Women Graduates USA, and I'm a past president and a founding member of that organization. And currently, I am the ECOSOC convener, and I am the United Nations representative for Women Graduates USA, because we are an unaccredited NGO at the UN. So as we were putting this meeting together, and in light of Kathy's comments about younger men, members wanting to know how uh, BCWAC fits into the more global context of international advocacy, uh, I happen to uh, mention that the year 2020 has some uh, milestone anniversaries for the women's movement, both globally and nationally. And so we decided that uh, it might be interesting to share some of these milestones and provide you with a different uh, content and from a different point of view. So in the next half hour, I'm going to attempt to contextualize the Bucks County Women's Advocacy Coalition into a global framework of the women's movement, um, viewing it through the lens of the United Nations. But in order to do that, I first have to take 45 years of women's history at the UN and condense it into 15 minutes. So we'll see how I do with that. And I'm only going to talk about a single topic. So if you have any further questions about the UN, I'd be more than happy to talk about it. And you can tell me at the end if I've succeeded in my uh, task or not. But first, before I get started, I want you to have a look at this quote. And it says, equal pay, equal sharing of unpaid care and domestic work, an end to sexual harassment and violence against women and girls, health care services that respond to their needs, and an equal participation in political life and in decision making in all areas. And I want you to take that and tuck it into the back of your head, think about it for a little bit, because I'm going to come back to it later. It should look familiar to you, but I think it, you'll find out that it's a little bit different than what you expected it to be. So as I said earlier, both globally and nationally, 2020 is a pivotal year for the accelerated realization of gender equality and the empowerment of women and girls everywhere. In 2020 globally, particularly at the United Nations, it is the 10th anniversary of the UN Resolution 1325 on Women, Peace, and Security. And this was the first women's UN peace resolution ever written that was intended to include women in the peace process. And it has been shown that unless women are included in the peace process, peace is not going to happen. However, this isn't happening either, so we still have a long road to hoe when it comes to including women at the peace table especially when you see tables of men and no women involved. Uh, it is the 75th anniversary of the United Nations. It is the fifth anniversary of the adoption of the 20, UN 2030 Agenda and the Sustainable Development Goals. Now, talking about the Sustainable Development Goals is a topic in and of itself, and if you want me at some future date to talk about the SDGs, I'd be more than happy, because they really relate to what we're doing here at Big Black. Uh, what I really want to talk to you about today is the 25th anniversary of the Fourth World Conference in Beijing. And it was the first world's women's conference that actively engaged member states along with civil society and non-governmental organizations uh, such as um, we're civil society. We are part of civil society. It includes academic institutions and the private sector such as businesses and commerce in partnership with the member states in order to make things happen. So I'm going to have to, I will give you a little breakdown on what the four world conferences are because it leads up to the final topic for the year 2020. This is a graphic that I actually created for the younger members in Women Graduates USA because they weren't even born when a lot of this happened. <laughs> and they don't know what this is. So they kind of sit there perplexed and saying, four world conferences, what are those? What's Beijing? What is this all about? 
Um, like I said, I was, they were probably toddlers and not even born yet. So I created this graphic for our younger members in order to explain to them uh, our history and why we've gotten from point A to point B when it comes to the United Nations and women's issues. So the first World Conference was in 1975, and it took place in Mexico City. And we actually have someone in this room who was in Mexico City in 1975, and that's our very own Nancy Morrill. <laughs> so if you'd like to know more about what actually happened in 1975, I'm sure Nancy at some point will be more than happy to talk to you about it. So 1975 was designated International Women's Year by the UN. Uh, and it kicked off a full decade called the Decade for uh, Women by the UN. And the first conference um, produced a document called the World Plan of Action for the Implementation of the Objectives of International Women's Year. The second conference was in Copenhagen in 1980, and it was mid-decade for uh, UN women. And uh, as far as I know, there was no uh, actual document that came out of that one, at least not one that I can find. Uh, the third conference was held in Nairobi, Kenya in 1985. And it was the uh, ending year for the UN uh, Women's Decade. And uh, so it, that conference was held to review and apprise what it had gone on in the previous 10 years as far as women's issues go uh, with the UN. And out of that came the Nairobi forward-looking strategies for the advancement of women. These documents are all still valid. They're all still being used. They all still have valid information. They're, um, they're actually guidelines and reference points for uh, actionable items. 1995 in Beijing was the pivot. This was an exceptional meeting that was held in China. And um, it was the last women's conference that's ever been held because out of this conference came a joint strategy between member states and women's organizations such as ourselves to work together in partnership. This was agreed on in Beijing in 1995. And out of that came the Beijing Resolution and the Beijing Platform for Action and the 12 Areas of Critical Concern for Activities and Engagement for Women and Girls. It has not been felt that there has been needed a another conference in the last 25 years because of what came out of Beijing. And so instead of having world conferences, they have what are called review years every five years. So there was a review in, 20, in 2000, 2005, 2010, 2015, and the 25th anniversary of this will be in 2020. Out of the um, Beijing, I'll talk about that afterwards. Why was this conference uh, different? Not only did it form a partnership between member states and um, women's organizations, 31,000 women descended on Beijing in 1995 for this conference. They were women who were really uh, engaged and interested and wanted to get on the bandwagon for making a change for the women in the world. Can you imagine 31,000 women in one place for two weeks from 200 uh, different countries. And out of that, they uh, created these documents that literally tried to change the world. And it also created a brand new role for civil society uh, in its partnership with member states in order to be able to make a difference. This partnership is really critical because uh, up until um, the Fourth World Conference, all these documents that had been produced at the Fourth World Conferences were only produced by member states. And unless they have someone pushing them from behind, they don't, they don't have, there is no impetus for them to get anything done. They create the documents, they agree to them, but they're not legally binding, so they can just kind of sit on them for a while. But it's us that works from behind and pushes them to make them make sure that things actually progress the way we actually want. So this was a pivotal moment in the, in the women's movement, was to have this partnership now in agreement with the member states to actually try and accomplish something. And Mary Purcell, I'm going to talk about Mary later, uh, the AUW, wrote in the AAUW Outlook in 1996 about this. It will be up to the NGOs, such as AAUW, to keep track of these governmental plans of action to make sure that the NGOs are indeed part of the process. And remember, this time we have a scorecard, and we must use it. So out of the platform for action, it's a 250 some odd page document. 
came these 12 areas of critical concern. And even if you don't know anything about Beijing, they all look very familiar because these are all women's issues. And the motto for, for the Beijing became very quickly, all issues are women's issues. And so we have women in poverty, education and training of women, women in health, violence against women, women in armed conflict, women in the economy, women in power and decision making, institutional mechanisms for the advancement of women, human rights of women, women and the media, women and the environment, and the girl child. Now each one of these areas of critical concern has a series of strategies, goals, and action points for people to, to follow. So they're, they're not just there for um, cosmetic uses, they actually are action plans behind each one. I'm gonna talk about two of them, and the two I'm gonna talk about are because two exceptional women turned the tide for certain areas in, um, in Beijing. So a critical area of concern, number nine, is human rights of women. So the phrase, women's rights are human rights, had been formed, created uh, several decades actually prior when people were talking about women's rights. Um, but you know, when you don't have to do anything about something, there's nobody behind you pushing it. It just kind of becomes a buzzword phrase that people use just for the sake of convenience. It was Hillary Clinton, who was then the First Lady of the United States, addressed the conference on September 5th in 1995. And she used the phrase, women's rights are human rights, as the core for her address. But in order to give it some teeth and to really make it um, I love the way you're smiling, you look, <laughs> that's great. Um, she actually took it and made it bi-directional. So she created the phrase, human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. So think about that. Human rights are women's rights, and women's rights are human rights. And it took off like a gangbuster, and this has become the iconic phrase out of Beijing, and it's now being used with some emphasis, and it's, um, it, it was a game changer. The second one I want to talk about is um, critical area of concern number 12. It's not something that we deal with directly with the Bucks County Women's Advocacy Coalition, but the woman who created this was a local woman. She was my mentor, she was my role model, and that is Dr. Mary Purcell. And at the beginning of the Beijing Conference for Women, there were actually only 11 critical areas of concern. But Mary and a group of supporting organizations um, felt the need that there needed to be one more area of critical concern and we needed to add the girl child to all of these other issues. Mary was a past president of AAUW and she is a past president of the International Federation of University Women which is formula, formula, formerly Graduate Women International which is the organization that I'm now on the board of. Um, Mary was passionate about the rights of women and girls and she fought her whole life for rights and uh, she felt strongly that the girl child needed to be added to this uh, document because the girl child of today is the woman of tomorrow. And girls are born with all kinds of potential, but they face so many barriers to their development. They, they don't develop fully as women as long as their rights are being obstructed. So this is Mary actually in Beijing arguing for the rights of the girl child to be added to this critical document. And I do have the right to use it because I asked AAUW for it and they sent it to me <laughs> because I needed it for another document that I was producing. So Mary passed away this year. I think she was 92 years old. And as, as I said, she was my role model and my mentor. She was a friend to me. And um, she went on after Beijing to form the Working Group on Girls at the United Nations, which is a group that brought teenage girls from all over the world to the UN to experience what goes on at the UN raised enough funding for these girls to have small stipends to take home with them and uh, with the idea that they were to do a small project based on what they had learned at the United Nations. So she passed away this summer and this is my tribute to Mary. So thank you Mary for everything that you have done for the rights of women and girls. <laughs> works with a series of re reviews. I won't go over them now. If you want to have more information about how it all works, I'd be glad to tell you at another time. Um, but the critical one, the critical review was the first review year in the in year June 2000 when um, the 
UN General Assembly held a special session just to review the Beijing documents. And it was entitled Women 2000, Gender Equality, Development and Peace for the 21st Century. And out of this uh, UN special ses session came uh, the adoption of the political Decor declaration and outcome document, further actions and initiatives to implement the Beijing Declaration and the Platform for Action. Um, this is important because the theme for Beijing 25, which will take place in the year 2020, is the, is the theme for the Commission on the Status of Women that will meet for two, two weeks in March of 2020. So what came out of 2000 is actually being is actually the theme for all the parallel events and side events that will be at the UN during the Commission on the Status of Women this year. So where are we now? We've done all of this work. We've been working for 45 years, at least at the UN, to try and get women's rights established. Well, <laughs> unfortunately, progress has been painful, if not slow, to none. And um, the majority of women and girls are still suffering the world over. Today, not a single country can claim gender equality. Um, obstacles still remain in law, culture, and um, traditions that put up barriers for uh, women. In no country anywhere do women still enjoy all the same rights as men. Advances in women's rights have threats from fundamentalism. Climate change is a huge problem right now for most of the women of the world. We have financial crisis, we have political turmoil. We have migration on, on a major, somebody here is involved with immigration, you know that uh, it's become a major issue at the world over. We have the largest population of migrants roaming the planet now that we've had in the last 75 years. All of these things obstruct um, the issue and the um, realization of women's rights and gender equality. So as a result, and we know this, Women still are undervalued, they're still underpaid, they earn less, they have a lot fewer choices, and they still experience all forms of violence at home and in public spaces. So how does this, how does Big Black, Big Black fit into all of this? Um, actually, uh, when you look at it really well, if you look at the 12 areas of critical concern, and if you look at, you've got them all in front of you on the table, Big Black's principles and goals, um, you'll look, you'll see that they, they almost match perfectly. So what Big Black is doing is actually implemented in the Beijing Platform for Action. The only one that we don't deal with directly is women in armed conflict, thank goodness. Um, women in the media, women in the environment, at least not yet. And the girl child is not directly related, but since the girl child is pervasive in everything that we do because we deal with women's economic empowerment, um, it, it's actually overlayered on everything that we do. So, back and forth is, it's not what the Beijing Platform for Action does for us, it's what we do in order to implement the Beijing Platform for Action. So everything that we do, minus those three or four items, promotes the success of these 12 critical areas of concern. So it's us at this bottom level that makes things happen. So you have you know, everything at the UN is a coming together. It's an identification of issues and problems. The problems the world are, for women and girls are worldwide. We all experience the same issues everywhere. Um, there's not much difference in what happens here to what happens in Bangladesh. It's varying levels of concern and poverty and lack of human rights, but the problems remain the same no matter where you go. And it's this kind of organization is Big Black that makes it happen at this level. Without our pushing and shoving and asking our politicians and our legislators and our governments to do the right things, none of this happens. This partnership between civil society and our member states has to happen in order to make women's rights a reality. So, back to the quote. If you look at the quote again, oh, what happened? <laughs> Sorry. If you look at the quote, equal pay, equal sharing of unpaid care and domestic work, and an end to sexual harassment and violence against women and girls, health care services that respond to their needs, and their equal participation in political life and decision making in all areas, is actually part of UN Women's um, campaign that they're launching, or they've launched it now, actually, to run in the year 2020. It's called Generation Equality, Realizing Women's Rights for an Equal Future. 
And it doesn't just state this, it demands this. Yeah. This is what, it, the word is demand. It's not just asking, it's not just putting it down on a piece of paper. It is demanding that this be done. If you look at what Big Whack does, it's not much different. If you look at our website, you'll find that our core conviction that all women and their families deserve access to services that help them achieve permanent economic self-sufficiency regardless of age, race, gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religious belief, and economic condition or medical and behavioral health sets status is not much different than what they're demanding at the UN level. So it's what we do from underneath that actually makes things happen. So nationally, <laughs> we'll get back down to a more local level. In 2020, you all know that it's the 100th anniversary of women's suffrage. Um, it marks the passage of the 19th Amendment guaranteeing and protecting women's constitutional right to vote. And it marks the century of progress since women won the right to vote and setting the agenda to achieve economic, political, and social equality. It doesn't say we've achieved it yet. It's just setting the agenda to achieve it. And here we are all this time, we're still not there. So I know you've all had your history lessons, so I won't go over it. But it's what the women did in 19, from 1948 to the year to 1920 that push the agenda to achieve the vote. Again, it's the women pushing from underneath to make sure they get what's due to them in order to establish equality. So while the 19th Amendment enfranchised 26 million American women who were allowed to vote in 1920, it still didn't enfranchise African American, Asian American, Hispanic American, or Native American women that came later. So what is Bucks County doing about this? And Lynn, you said you were on the committee and you know more about this than I do. <laughs> If he's been working on it, it's uh, still in the construction, so I have copy that down and she will be adding all of this information as they get it. So I hope I've given you a very quick uh, rundown of 45 years of women's history at the UN and how the Bucks County Co Coalition is layered perfectly on top of the total global agenda for women's rights and justice. And I hope I've succeeded in, in making that a... Um, making that point. So thanks, Kathy. Thanks, Rene. And if you ever want to do the sustainable development goals, which is absolutely fascinating, I'd love to do that too.